Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today, we need to be having a look at some more cards from Pokemon Card 151. And the thing is, now two of them were still revealed on the, these kind of cardboard standees that are being posted around Pokemon centers in Japan. And it's honestly so weird to me that this is how they are just revealing a bunch of these cards. But I'm not going to lie to you, it kind of makes me happy. It's um, it's kind of new, it's kind of uncharted territory here. It's been a long time since we've been covering card reveals like this. It kind of gives me a bit of a throwback vibe, and I'm kind of loving it. So shout out to Nupi Pokeka, N-U-P-P-O-K-E-K-A, -E who shared the Dodrio image, and to the lovely, well, I believe... We are talking about Garico underscore 0320, who shared the Dragonite image. Although we've also got a lovely Hitmonlee as well, which was shared by Oricon News. Or oricon.co.jp slash news. But you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You get what we mean. So what have we got here then? Well, if we start off with Hitmonlee, and I should say I did the translations for these myself, but I have checked with a lovely Antoine Boulet, as I tend to do. So starting off with Hitmonlee, then we got 120 HP basic, which is fine, but let's face it, in the modern game, that's not going to keep you going too long. We've got an attack for free fighting energy that does 100. I think it's fair to say that's not worth getting excited about. Like, fighting energy has never been a particularly easy one to accelerate. That's always kind of been the point, but honestly... Yeah, th this is not going to work, ladies and gentlemen. This is not going to work. And honestly, right, if you ever did get free fighting energy on this Pokemon, which would not be easy, and as I've said, it it's not terribly recommended, even if you did 100 damage, that's all you get? I know it's a basic Pokemon, but still, nah. But the first attack is far more interesting. Because you see, the first attack, what we've got here is for a single fighting energy... You deal 10 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, and that is both active and benched. And then you switch Hitmonlee to the bench. Okay. And let's not beat around the bush here. This is for Ting Lu. This is a ridiculously good partner for Ting Lu. It took me, after seeing the card, it took me like 30 seconds to realize this was for Ting Lu. And I honestly felt a little bit embarrassed because it's so obvious. This is such a ridiculously in-your-face, play-me-with-Ting-Lu kind of card. Because you see, Ting-Lu's got an amazing ability, whereby non-EX Pokemon that have any damage counters on have no abilities. So what you need to do, if you're going to be using Ting-Lu, there are two things you need to do. Number one, you need to get damage on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Number two, you need to get Ting Lu into the active. Now, Ting Lu's free energy 150 plays two damage counters on one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It, it's fine. But again, the whole point of Ting Lu is that you're shutting down your opponent's deck. So even though it's slower, it doesn't matter that it's slower because you've got more time to play around with this. That's fine. This is great. And we know that Ting Lu doesn't turn off the X abilities that sad, blah, blah, blah. But here, like turn one... Going second, energy on Hitmonlee, use the attack, all of your opponent's Pokemon have damage counters on and hence lose their abilities, and then you switch to the bench, and yes, obviously Ting Lu becomes active. This is a very, like, very in-your-face, play-me-with-Ting-Lu kind of card, but that's alright. I don't really imagine a world in which you're playing Ting Lu, but you're not playing this card. Now, don't get me wrong... There's plenty of other things that you can do. You know, you, I like the idea of using Coridon to get energy on Ting Lu in the early game. So, you know, turn one Coridon, get a couple of energy from the discard onto Ting Lu, and then start smashing with Ting Lu. That's absolutely fine as well. But I'm just saying that I don't see any world in which you would play Ting Lu and not play one or two of these at the bare minimum to give you that option of going, oh, all your Pokemon are damaged, and now I've got Ting Lu in the active. That just seems too gosh darn good, ladies and gentlemen. That just seems too gosh darn good. I'm giving this card four Wossies, but that is a gigantic caveat. Basically, it's great in Ting Lu decks. 
and it's okay in others. Like, being able to do 10 damage to everything and still switch to a blocking card, you know, you could use a Clef Key, for instance. That's fine, but it's great with Ting Lu. And then it's kind of interesting with some other stuff like Clef Key. So I'm giving it four Wossies, but it's not really four Wossies because it's very much kind of either it's amazing or it's kind of fine. It's basically like a five or a three so I'm giving it four, and that'll have to do, ladies and gentlemen. That'll have to do. But this is not the only new card that has been revealed and looks kind of interesting. We've also got ourselves a new Dodrio. And I'll be honest with you, right? This one made me pretty proud of myself because this was not the easiest card to translate. Now, what we've got for Dodrio here, we need to go for the attack first. You'll see why. The attack for a single energy does 10 damage, plus 30 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if you, and it's got 100 HP, which actually is still very annoying, because remember, 100 HP means exactly, well, it's still really low, but it's just out of reach of level ball. It's like the lowest HP you can have and not be searchable with level ball, which I mention it every time I see 100 HP Pokemon, I'm going to keep doing it, this is absurd. But if you max out here, nine damage counters on there, then you're doing 280 damage for a single colorless energy on a stage one Pokemon. That is a very efficient attack. And it's fraught with awkwardness, right? Because you don't really want to put nine damage counters on 100 HP Pokemon because your opponent is going to have a field day. Any kind of spreading deck, any kind of damage counters or hitting the bench or anything like that is going to take it out easily. And good players, if they have the right cards in their deck, will be able to manipulate it. So by the time you get close enough to having enough damage counters on to do real good damage, they'll KO you with whatever they've got to hit the bench. So that's annoying, right? But if you can make it work, that is good damage. But then we've got the ability Wild Dash Draw. Once during your turn, you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon if you do draw a card. Now, very important to note that the draw in the card is dependent on placing the damage counter. What you're not able to do with this is just use this as a draw engine and nothing else. If you're using it for draw, you've also got to use it for the damage. To put it another way, if you've got nine damage counters on here, you're not able to draw a card without being able to KO this at the same time, which is obviously a bit disappointing. However, draw is good, and drawing one card on a stage one is not great, right? We, we've seen a bunch of this over the years. It's not amazing. That's fine. But you're still drawing a card. Draw is fine. But then on top of that, we've also got the whole, you put a damage counter on. And maybe this can be enough. Maybe this can be the thing that turns this into like a legit playable card. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying that this is going to help it out a fair bit. Perfect? No. Not claiming it is by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, let's say for argument's sake, you play it with Gapejaw Bog. Well, Gapejaw Bog will go and put two damage counters on it when you bench it. You then use the ability to put a third damage counter on. So... Even though you might not be able to get up to nine without a lot of players scuppering you with whatever they can, you can very, if you want to, and I'm not saying you always will, but if you want to, you will be able to get 100 damage for a single energy on this pretty easily. Pentado Duo, take the two damage counters, next turn evolve, use the ability, three damage counters, three times 30, plus a 10, 100 damage, jobs are good. And I'm not sure it's good enough, but it's got potential to do real good damage and it can help you draw cards at the same time. That ain't bad, ladies and gentlemen. That ain't bad at all. I'm giving this between three and four Wossies. We don't give half Wossies. That would be barbaric. I don't think it's great, and I do think good players will play around it, but I do think it is at the very least very, very interesting. And then we finish off with Dragonite, and look how happy Dragonite looks. He looks so gosh darn happy. And here's the thing, right? Dragonite to stage two and double dragon energy no longer exists. And those two statements side by side basically tells us why this could be an amazing card and will not be an amazing card. You see, we've got 180 HP, which is quite high. And do remember that being a dragon Pokemon means no weakness. So 180 HP with no weakness on a single prize Pokemon, that's a very good start. You then add in the ability which just says your Pokemon in play have no retreat cost. 
No retreat costs whatsoever. All of your Pokemon. Now, from a wording standpoint, this is actually really, 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 really important. Because let's take that new stadium, Ruinous Desert, which is coming out in Paldea Evolved, we imagine. All basic Pokemon in play, other than fighting Pokemon, have to pay an extra energy to retreat. Or have one extra energy in their retreat cost. Kind of annoying, right? The important thing about the wording of Dragonite here is that it makes the retreat cost zero. So it doesn't matter what thing, you know, it doesn't reduce it by two, reduce it by three or any of that. Because it makes it zero, anything your opponent might have that would be increasing the retreat cost doesn't work. You ignore it all and just go straight to zero. Really nice ability. Is anyone going to play a stage two just to get free retreat on all their Pokemon? Probably not. We've then got one water, one lightning energy, 180 damage. Discard the top two cards of your deck. Now, discarding the top two cards of your deck are annoying, but I, I kind of get where they're going with this. 180 for two energy is quite good. So you understand why they want you to discard two cards on the top of your deck. It's basically the card designer's way of saying, this is a really good attack, damage-wise, for low energy, so let's give you a downside. And it's two cards. There will be times that it, it makes you discard the cards you really need and loses you the game, and that'll be rubbish. But other than that, most of the time, it'll be fine. The problem here is, getting a stage two Pokemon alone is awkward enough. If I had double dragon energy and I could attach it and this would pay the two energy and this was essentially a single energy attack, yes. But otherwise, no. And look, I know a bunch of you at this stage are going, what's it, you've forgotten about reversal energy. I haven't, incidentally. I have not forgotten about reversal energy. Because reversal energy is free of any kind of energy, when attached to an evolution Pokemon, check, that doesn't have a rule box, check. If you've got more prize cards remaining than your opponent. So no, it's not the same as Double Dragon Energy. Because if I'm even on prizes or ahead on prizes, it doesn't work. And that's why the loss of Double Dragon Energy here makes me really sad. This is a card that has a huge amount of potential. If this was, say, a stage one with Double Dragon Energy, I'd be fawning all over it. It would be lovely. But the fact that it's a stage two that needs two different energy, nah. I'm giving it... I'm giving it three Wossies because I don't want to be disrespectful because it is a good card if you ignore that it's a stage two. But I, I do think this is another one of those cards like so many lately that is destined to be, hey, that's really cool. I wish it wasn't a stage two. And I think it really is as simple as that. Right, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the new cards in Pokemon Card 151, and now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think of this set. Tell me which of these cards you find interesting. Tell me if you're happy like I am that I did my video about how good Pokemon Card 151 looks yesterday, and then we got these cards today, but I at least didn't have to edit them into the video yesterday. That would have been a pain. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon, card games, Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely UberMX, who's been a supporter of ours for quite a long time now, and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support, and for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourself till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.